All right. Well, I want to first start off by saying thank you. This is such an incredible opportunity to be sitting here with not only an icon, but an absolute hero of mine. So thank you, Shania. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I guess we'll get right into it. 15 years in between albums, but you're back in a big way. <laughs> Yeah. And so much success right from the get-go. Your album debuted at number one, already certified platinum here in Canada. Having that success and being on this side of it now, are you able to see those 15 years in between a little differently now? Well, the process of writing the album, mm -hmm. um, the whole experience was a reflection on, on my whole life, in fact. And so by the end of the process, I definitely saw everything differently, you know. I mean, I'd, um, I, you know, I was, songwriting always does take me into myself anyway and really is a very self-reflection experience mm -hmm. or self-reflecting experience. Um, so, you know, by the end of finishing the writing of the album um, and even recording it, you know, even the recording process really gave me a new perspective on a lot of things in my life, yeah, in a positive way, yeah. you know, very, more, a lot of clarity, a lot of clarity came out of it. Yeah. yeah, and you've always been very upfront publicly with some of the challenges that you faced, yeah. including the thought of maybe never being able to make more music. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever get to a point where you accepted that and thought, if this is it, this is okay, or did you always have that little fight inside that thought, if there's a will, there's a way we're going to do it? Well, I was at the point where I was accepting that I may never be able to sing again. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> I was never going to be okay with that. Um, I was always, it was always going to bother me and I would have always suffered from mm -hmm. that. Um, the determination came really more from, uh, I wanted to be, I wanted to make sure that every stone had been turned. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be so certain that there was no possible way that I could um, sing again. And so I, you know, I really just took a lot of work, a lot of research, a lot of time and mm -hmm. effort to get to the bottom of uh, not only what was wrong with the voice, but how to get it back. Yeah. And it was just a long uphill battle to, um, to a result I wasn't even certain of. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that was really more, that's where more of the courage came from. It's like, okay, am I going to invest all of this emotional energy and time just to get to the end of it and be disappointed yeah. with the result. Yeah. So, but I was so miserable not being able to sing that it, it was worthwhile. It was the only way. Yeah. And um, the only way was to try. And this may sound like a weird question, but do you ever allow yourself to think about what you've achieved? Selling more than 100 million albums worldwide, being the highest selling female country artist of all time. Do you identify with those accolades or do you kind of just put that on a shelf and live a normal life? <laughs> I mean, every, I don't, it's not something that I think about every day for sure, but everyone's, you know, I am reminded of it, of course, uh, during a promotional mm -hmm. period, like releasing this album, I'm reminded of, uh, for example, I mean, it's the 20th anniversary for Come On Over, yeah. it's the 15th anniversary for, um, 15 year anniversary for Up, so, of course, during moments like that, I'm reminded of the sales yeah. and the, the, the accomplishments there. Um, and all of the, uh, the power of the music sort of, I'm reminded of the power of the music and, mm -hmm. and, and, and its longevity. Yeah. So I guess there's just always keystone moments that bring all of the facts up to the surface yeah. again, and then I get to relive the experience, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but I don't live that every day, of course. <laughs> I'm not thinking about the, about the, the accolades and the, and the statistics every day. For sure. Uh, so when we go back to your earlier days, you pushed a lot of boundaries. You took a lot of risk. Did you realize at the time that you were not only paving your own career, but you were redefining the role that women will forever have in country music? I was really busy trying to define who I was mm -hmm. and what my sound was, my style, what I wanted to say, what I wanted to express. Did I know that it was going to redefine um, anything else and have the effect that it didn't know. Of course, I hope <laughs> I had known that. Yeah. But, um, so my intentions were to be as original and as unique as I could be. Um, and really, you know, I, I had come from a long childhood and, and teen career of uh, doing cover music. Mm -hmm. So 
really determining what my own personal style mm -hmm. was and translating um, my personal songwriting style into what that was going to sound like as a recording mm -hmm. artist. That was my focus. Yeah. How are you able to be able to push those boundaries, take those risks, but you still always had such a well-respected reputation? We see a lot of uh, stars, especially early on in their career, they get that pressure and that fame, and they're trying to do something unique, but they kind of fall in the wrong place. You've always been able to keep such a great reputation. How did you stay grounded through all of that? First of all, I was working so hard anyway <laughs> during the uh, years of all those three albums mm -hmm. that I didn't have time to get into trouble or to uh, to lose focus. I was just working. I was I was working like crazy, um, very heavy schedules, uh, and a lot of the reason why I was so busy um, was because I, I wear a lot of hats. Yeah. I I write the songs. I'm. I'm part of the whole creative process in the studio. I'm obviously the the, the vocalist, and then I'm the, the live performer. I produce um, so much of what I do on mm -hmm. stage. I'm involved with the art direction of all the videos, uh, the concepts of the videos, all of the glamour, the styling, everything. Yeah. So I'm wearing so many hats that it's not like I just show up and sing and then go home, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm busy and I'm preoccupied, and I think that what, that's what keeps me focused. And and um, and hard work just does keep you grounded. I think yeah. you know if you're if you're if you're caught up in the in being a hard worker, and uh, then I think ethics um, become more of a priority to you uh, than if you're just um, being a star. Yeah, you know, I'm busy being a star. I didn't have a lot of time to be busy being a star. <laughs> yeah, so you mentioned that 20 years since you released Come On Over. That will forever be one of the biggest, most groundbreaking albums of all time. But that was an album that was following up another incredibly successful album, The Woman and Me. Mm -hmm. it, and it was so unique and so different for its time. Did that worry you that maybe it wouldn't be as well received as The Woman and Me? Or did you just think, this is what I want to put out, we're doing it? Of, of course. Uh, Come On Over was, they were all risks, every album. Every <laughs> album I've done has been a risk. Uh, and the, you know, The Woman in Me was a risk in the sense that I was uh, signed to a country music um, uh, label within the Universal. And yet I knew I was not going to be making a traditionally country album. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a singer-songwriter that's definitely more styled in the direction of maybe folk or alternative country. Yeah. And, you know, with a bit of a rock edge. And that's just, I'm a, I'm a bit of a hybrid of my youth and the music that I listened to growing up, which was Top 40 radio. And that meant uh, Glenn Campbell, um, Willie Nelson, The Eagles, Stevie Wonder, Gladys Knight, the Mamas and the Papas, the Carpenters. I mean, how much more broad range can you get, yeah. right? So I was picking a little bit from all those genres. I was picking, um, the st there's storytelling. There's so much to being an artist for me. Um, there's the, 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 the concepts and, and the things you want to say, um, the, the purpose behind your what you're saying. And then there's the... Um, then there's just being a, uh, a lyricist and, mm -hmm. and a creative writer. And then there's the music side of it. Um, and then there's being the singer, your style as a vocalist. So all of those elements, I drew from every, every, every influence in the top 40 radio in Canada when I was growing up. So that was never going to end up sounding pure country yeah. or pure anything. It was yeah. just going to end up sounding like your Shania. music, yeah. And then when I moved in to come on over, so that made the first album a risk, knowing that that was already going to be its own thing. And then come on over was really just about making sure that okay, you know, have we, um, you know, did we spend all of our best ideas on the first album, and you know, are there any great ideas left? Yeah. And, and that's always something that we never really know about ourselves. You know, um, can you? 
come up with great ideas. Yeah. And how do you ever know? There's no guarantee. So now being here in 2017, and obviously music and, and how we get music and how we listen to music has changed so much with social media, are you finding it very different? Or did you always kind of blaze your own trail anyway? I really did just blaze my own trail. <laughs> and I never, I mean, it, we're all at the mercy of the way the industry operates. Mm -hmm and the way um, people are exposed and have access to us and our music. Um, are you happy but that... Hap I'm happier now almost because there's less between the fan and mm -hmm. the artist yeah. and the media and the artist. But are you so, kind of happy that you didn't have that pressure of social media back in the no, early 2000s? I, I find that it's... I don't find it a pressure. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, I find it fun to have all the accessibility um, and you do get a lot of really you know you get honest responses you get immediate response the immediacy is very helpful for an artist. Yes. you I just want to know you're I so wanna, connected yeah. Uh, yeah I don't yeah. want to wait months to get a response you know um, and I can be quite impatient and I enjoy the immediacy of it and when you are home with your family you've mentioned before that you love the domestic life you love to to make dinner, is there a special meal that your family really enjoys when you make it? Oh uh, yeah, I, my family in general overall love my soups. I make good soups. I, make. <laughs> um, I make really great gravy too. Oh, nice. They love my gravy. I think I'm known for my gravy and my soups. Well, next time you're <laughs> back in town, be sure to drop off some soups and gravy. They're I know, two of my it's, favorites. <laughs> it's cold weather, it's cold weather food. I'm good at cold weather foods. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to say thank you again. This has been such an incredible honor to be able to talk with you and congratulations on all the success. I, I can't wait for another album. I'm sure that you're working on behind the scenes. <laughs> oh, I am. I'm, I don't want to stop now. I'm really, I've really enjoyed finally getting back to it. And of course, I'm extremely relieved that it was received so well and um, just having fun with the whole experience. Well, we can't wait to catch you on tour. Thank you. I look Thanks. forward to it. <laughs>